Krzysztof Kislavski's The Decalogue is a bit of a hard sell. A 10-hour made-for-TV, state-produced reflection on the Ten Commandments and dour portrait of social difficulties in late 80s Poland. However, it's so much more than this, and I aim to reveal to you why you should spend 10 hours of your precious time exploring the lives of the characters in the housing project that make up the Decalogue. And if you've already seen this masterpiece, this is a chance to remind yourself of its excellence. Let's deal with the elephant in the room. The reason it took me so long to get round to watch the Decalogue is because it is 10 hours long. Now, that's a bit of a misnomer. It is not really 10 hours long. It's 10 interrelated yet standalone episodes, each one somewhat focusing on a singular commandment, but never in an explicit way. It's been the case. I feel Decalogue actually fits in quite smoothly with the current day binging culture. If people can spend however many hours it is watching Netflix's Tiger King, which I refuse to watch because King is a leopard, then you can watch 10 hours of prestige Polish drama. The second thing to deal with is the Ten Commandments stuff. I mean, functionally, the Decalogue, hence the name, is about the Ten Commandments, but the secret is it's also kind of not. At no point does any episode ascribe a commandment to you, and each is more dealt with the transgression of some ethical rule that can be related to a commandment. These are not reflections of an antiquated rule of ethics. These are very much reflections of Poland at the time and deal with themes that are universal. For example, the first episode, it's technically based on having no gods before God, but it's really about the idolization of science in the modern world. The second episode is nominally about not taking the name of God in vain, but it's far more abstract than that. It's really about the sanctity of speech, and it presents this moral issue of the power of language a doctor has in prescribing death and what that means going forward. Another perfect example is the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill, which in the Decalogue turns out to be one of the most powerful and affecting non-polemical arguments against the death penalty you will ever see. And I want to get back to this phrase, non-polemical. This is political filmmaking all the way through, but it's also social realist filmmaking. The beauty of the Decalogue and the beauty of Kislovsky in general is that it always works on these two levels. It reminds me of his other major work, the Three Colours trilogy, which is, again, nominally about a reflection of French values, the tricolour, the red, the white, the blue, liberté, égalité, fraternité. And to an extent, the trilogy is about this, but to another extent, it's also an excuse to get some funding to make the movies he actually wants to make. Much like with those films, in the Decalogue, there is a root theme that is accessible, but they're about so much more. And at every point, and this is why, to me, Kislovsky is one of the best filmmakers of all time, there's this perfect balance of perspectives. Everything works on this wider symbolic and political level, yet every single episode works on a deeply dramatic and personal level. They work as dramas about characters as much as they work as thematic and artistic pieces of cinema. Take the first episode, for example. You watch it because it deals with this lovely and very heady debate about science versus religion and what the changing face of technology will do to society. And you can also read this as a much wider point about the state of Poland as this unthinking, unfeeling machine. The ruthless efficiency and precision of a legal system or a framework that again rears its head in episode 5. But it's also just a compelling drama about a father and his son in which you care about the characters and their relationships. This is humanist filmmaking, it's not the cold clinicism of some other filmmakers. It is intellectual, 
It is rich, it is deep, it is profound, but there's always a human angle to grab onto. So again, I urge you to watch or re-watch these films because they're so rewarding. And rewatch is a key word here because these are films that really hold up to a very precise and careful viewing. For precise examples of this, in every episode there is sublime visual storytelling. So much of Decalogue is mood and atmosphere. The cinematography and the acting is as important as the dialogue. A very clear example of this is in the second episode where there is this moment of this bug climbing out of this glass against all odds, which wonderfully thematically reflects the overarching narrative of the episode. And Decalogue is full of moments like this that really reward a very attentive viewing. Which leads to the question of what is the best way to watch the Decalogue? And I'm kind of split on this. Fundamentally, I think you should watch them in succession, but not all at once. The reason not all at once is because it's ten hours long and that's too long to do anything. Um, also, these are episodes that demand reflection and engagement. They're not disposable. I personally watched it in three viewings, one of which was five hours long, because I found it really compulsive, I found it really engaging. But you may want to spend more time, and I'm eager to go back and revisit particular episodes. The one thing I will insist on, though, is watching it in order. It's very easy to see this as ten standalone films, and they somewhat are, but the connectedness is incredibly important, and the order is really important. I mean, you get these wonderful revelations when you start to think about the interrelated parts. I mean, on a basic level, there are characters that reoccur. If you look at the Wikipedia page, they'll note the theme of milk, which reoccurs, which is an interesting observation to make. Um, but to go back to this first episode, there is this thematic green glow, which is the computer screen, which again has this symbolic and narrative relevance and in this episode it's the reflection of a way of thinking of an approach of a rationalism of an emotionless state of a precision and then we get to episode five which may be the best and the whole thing is filmed differently the whole episode has a green tinge it's like a david venture film and when viewing these clothes in succession, it starts to make this wider point where this film about the death penalty and the legal system has the same aesthetic of this machine, which I won't get into the spoilers of what happens with the machine in the first episode, but there's a continuation of logic there that's just fascinating. In addition to that, there is a kind of genre progression across the series, these are very thoughtful and quite depressing pieces of cinema. I mean, there is one about Holocaust guilt, which is one of the most strangely conventional in terms of storytelling, but one of the most emotionally effective. It brought me to tears. However, the final episode segues into dark comedy. It's still very Kislovsky, but it feels much more Western in its filmmaking and its narrative, it's more this kind of like crime film about this underground stamp market and all the intricacies related there. It's really quite funny and it, it, it's awesome. And it seems so out of peace with the rest, yet when seen as this overall work about Poland at a moment in time, the way the series starts out so focused in on character and circumstance and ends with something so much more thematically western so much more hollywood it reflects the progression of a culture over time and it's not accidental that the decalogue came in the waning years of the communist state we see through these progression of films a changing society and the more you watch them in succession the more you see that as these values start to peak to the surface but I'll say no more. Just watch or rewatch Kislovsky's Decalogue.